just to know that said the Lord. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the set the Lord. I believe every mother, old age, present age, age to come, will always remember this song. So this song, this hymn, is being dedicated right now as I come to you all on this Mother's Day Eve. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the set the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him for and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, hope for grace to trust him more. I am so glad I learned to trust him, precious Jesus. Savior friend, and I know that thou art with me, will be with me then to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, hope for grace to trust in more. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory Amen. be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want to say happy pre-Mother's Day. God is good and I am going to greet you all, my Facebook family, friends, authentic followers, supporters, my crew here at home with me where we're able to come together in this fashion. The building don't matter. We're, we are the church and we are still here. Amen. Glory be to God. So I greet you all, Apostolic House of Miracles, all my ministers, all my faithful, wonderful congregants, parishioners, in y'all rightful homes, and viewing and supporting always. God bless you all today. And my awesome anointed son, Minister Dodie Antonia, the young prophet, Minister Makins, my daughter, who is standing, standing full force to support that God work continue to get done. So I'm coming, we're coming with the word today. Amen. And then after the word, we're going to come back to you and we have a treat for you, a great worship. Hallelujah to the love of God. And as we continue to grow and to do more and above and beyond that God would ever have us to do, we're pushing boundaries even in this pandemic. That's what we're doing. We're determined in this pandemic to push boundaries and to do what men think we can't do in a pandemic quarantine. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're more than conquerors. Bow your heads with me if you may. Thank you. Father, I thank you for this blessed day. None of me but all of you. Let this flesh be crucified, Lord, that as I speak, Lord, it will be your spirit speaking through me. Let it completely die, God. Just move me out of the way, God. Never let this flesh come before your spirit, God. I humble myself, Lord. I all of myself, I commit my spirit to you, and I call it done and say, let the blood, the blood of Jesus prevail. Let the blood, the blood of Jesus reign. Let the blood, the blood, the blood of Yahshua prevail. Let the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Yahshua prevail. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The blood still works. Hallelujah. We don't care who play with it. We know that there's always going to be some counterfeits, but we are talking about Jesus' blood. It yes. still work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Hallelujah. the love of God. So today I want to talk to you a little bit today. And uh, please pardon me if I begin to preach. I'm really not trying to preach today. But please just understand when when, when fire is in your bone and, and the Holy Ghost is moving through you at times, that fire will come out 
But I want to talk to us a little bit today. And, and, and I, I'm going to just say I'm talking to mothers. Mothers. And I may include the daddies. And I may include the women. Because even if we've never bore a child. But we have participated. Or we have nieces or whatever it is. Or we have we have been able to be a mother, whether to babysit the child, whatever it is, to support a child, whatever it is, that even you who have never conceived, consider yourself a mother. Amen? Amen. So we're going to talk a little bit today. Yes. And I'm going to talk to you coming out of Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16. My God, my God, my God. And I'm going to begin to read verse 1. Now, Sarah... Abraham's wife had borne him no children. And she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Agar. So Sarah said to Abraham, See, now the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarah. Then Sarah, Abram's wife, took Agar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband. Abram to be his wife, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. So he went into Agar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarah said to Abraham, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace. Then Sarah said to Abraham, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between you and me. So Abraham said to Sarah, Indeed, your maid, indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarah dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness. Hmm. This, is, this is juicy. By the spring on the way to Spar. And he said, Agar, Sarah's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I'm fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarah. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for multitude. They shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, They all you are with child. And you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees. For she said, Have I also here seen him who sees me? Therefore, the well was called Behar Laha, Roy. Observe, it is between Kadesh and Berit. So Agar bore Abram a son. And Abram named a son, whom Agar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old. When Agar bore Ishmael to Abraham. Now, gee, that sounds like a whole lot of drama. It sounds like a whole lot of mix-up. It sounds like a whole lot of confusion. 
But who caused the confusion? Was it Abraham? Was it Abraham? Was it Sarah? I come to tell you it was Sarah. In my observation, it was Sarah who had a problem. Now mark you, if we go over to, ch to chapter 50, we'll see where she doubted when God, when the Lord said, you shall. She doubted, she laughed, she made mockery. Now, we want to, I want to speak to the mothers. Oftentimes, in, in chapter 15, she mocked, she laughed, she did not believe. She had a mockery, she was very sarcastic, okay? And then here comes God himself, proof that what he said, it is so. And what, what is so, it shall be. And so, what was said, the promise that was made to the power of the Holy Ghost, God Almighty, came to pass. And now, watch this. Now, Sarah, Abram's wife, had bore him no children. She, she didn't believe. And, and so she stepped in and decided, I'm going to help God. I'm going to help God. Mm -hmm. So now she took it upon herself to, to, to give to her husband the maid. Now, let me pause. In this old scenario here, in this old truth, we mothers at times, we can bring havoc in our homes. We, 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 that's why the word of God says, a wise woman builds her house, but a foolish woman pluck it down with her hands. Now, she had a problem here. She told her husband, who listens to her, who was humble, who was submissive. Uh huh. Y'all, but stay with me, cause I I might not have a lot of likes today, because I'm gonna I'm gonna prove to us today how we women slash mothers how we can destroy our homes, how how we can destroy our our marriages, how we can destroy our children. know that as a result of that we start chaos in our house by trying to help God and to step out of the will of God not being patient uh huh so and she had an Egyptian maid servant whose name was Agar Agar meaning flight Agar means flight to run away to always to always be just Wondering, running away, always going somewhere. Mm -hmm. Which we literally saw happen when the scripture was read. So Sarah said to Abraham, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham heeded the voice of Sarah. Mm -hmm. Then Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Agar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband. Now after she did that, then she turned, then she turned on him, mm -hmm, Abram to be his wife, and after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan, so he went into Agar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Now she began to despise Hagar. She, she began now to bring Abbot when she made the law. She asked now, this man was humble. He was humble. And I want to pause a little bit here and say to us women, to us mothers and, and, and those of you who might be becoming mothers, young mothers, that you be careful what you say to your husband or your children when you tell them for a letter, go do and go do. And they go do what they do and get themselves entangled, get themselves in trouble. Don't blame them because you were the one who caused them to do what they do. You were
were the one who made the wrong decision. You were the wrong who brought the wrong spirit in the house. You were the one who allowed people to be in your house. You were the one who bring all kinds of people in your house. You were the one who bring certain spirit in your house. You were the one who became an harlot in your house and bring different baggages in the house. You were the one then you begin to blame, blame, blame. You now begin to blame when you were the one who said, go do this, go do that, and do this. You were the one. And the result, our homes, as parents, as mothers, our homes, our life has caused us to live a curse. Our life is in turmoil. You see, she caused the turmoil in the house. Now what I want to bring up to you in this, I come to find out that the men, now y'all don't rule me, come correction here, but in my own observation, in my own survey, I come to find out that men are more humble than women. I come to find out that the men will be quicker to say, okay, I come to find out a real man have the spirit like Abraham. I come to find out that a real man, a real man, he will just say, okay, okay, baby, okay. Now, I, 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 I believe in my own survey, I believe men are more submissive than women. <laughs> Why would you say the chief when they suffer with ego? Why would you say the chief when some of them are so feminine? Why would you say that chief when they're so wicked? Why would you say that chief when you have been to hell with, with whom you marry? Why would you say that? I say this because I am making my own observation and because two did wrong don't mean that all is wrong. Because two did not submit, it don't mean that all of them are the same. Love believe all things. Love prove all things. And so in my own observation, in my own survey, I come to find it out. Can I share a story with you that is real? So while I was setting up National Day of Prayer platform, I dealt with men and women. And I gave instructions of what to do. And the men, the men were very submissive. The men were, were very respectful. They had no problem to do what I asked them to do. I'm not saying all of them, but most of them. And when I did my count, and did my review, and did my observation, and came to a conclusion, I found out that real men of God are more submissive than even us women. Yeah, let me talk with you a little bit. I want to I wanna help the mothers today. Amen. And, and so I, I begin to look into it. So I went to, to I, I'm, I'm dealing with young, I'm dealing with my son, okay? I'm going to put my son on the very test as well. And so I dealt with a young man in New York. And, and, and he said, I said, I need you to do X, I need you to do Y, I need you to do Z. And when he did it, I said, uh-uh, it's too long, and I need you to do it over. And what he did, and he went and he made amends. And I went back again and I said, well, you didn't do X, Y, Z, you have to do it over. And he said, well, chief, uh, just forget it another time, because I packed everything up, I, I'll do it another time. Let me it. I said, okay. Now, he has the Holy Ghost. He has the Holy Spirit. And about a few minutes later, I got a text that said, the Holy Spirit corrects me. And Chief Apostle, I'm going to do it over. And I'm going to do exactly what you require of me to do. Hallelujah. No, he wasn't cocky. He wasn't rude, no. He said the Holy Spirit told him, no, you need to go and do it over. The chief has given you an order. And, this, and he explained, he said, uh-uh, I've got to do this, okay? 
Sounds good. Now, I didn't answer right away because I was taking care of other, speaking to other pastors. And I, I finally got back and he did exactly what I asked him to do. Hallelujah. In the time and factor, everything. And he got it to me. Did you hear me? He got it to me. He got up. He was on a prayer line. And the Holy Spirit telling him, you better get up this prayer line and go do exactly what the chief apostle asked you to do. And Hallelujah. let the mothers of Zion finish building that wall. You are commissioned to do something that I have ordered you to do. Amen. Now, that's a man. That's a young man. That's a young man that I believe a lot of people look down on. Uh huh. That's a young man. That's a lot of people might be speculating some things about him because you don't. You see, sometimes the very elect, the very special anointed people look insipid and look like something is wrong with them. Y'all better hear me. And that young man did exactly Hallelujah. what he was asked to do Hallelujah. without a problem. And the only he allowed the Holy Spirit to correct him. Now, if we look here, we will see how Abraham submitted. He didn't force. He submitted to this woman who seemed like she had a bipolar behavior, who brought confusion in her house. He submitted. If there is a mother out here like Sarah, I come to tell you, you better quit. Understand. Let your yes be yes. And when you make a decision, a decision must be a decision. Don't do it if you're going to create havoc among your children. Don't say it if you're going to create havoc in your house. Don't say it if you're going to create havoc among your children. Don't do it. You Amen. see, you see, Esau and Jacob, the complex, all of that problem started with the mother. The mother was the evil behind Jacob and Esau. That's another sermon right there. Let me stay right here. So, there we go. I have another pastor. And I said to the pastor, this is too long. I need you to do it over. He said, Chief Apostle, I am going to do exactly what you asked me to do. Hallelujah. He was so willing. He was so ready. I am going to do exactly what you asked me to do. I said, okay, pastor. Go ahead. He did exactly what I asked him to do. He, he was asked to do it over. And he did it over. With no attitude. Uh, come on, somebody. You better, you better hear me. With no attitude. We hear you, Chief. Uh -huh. No attitude. He submitted. He reminds me of Abraham. Uh -huh. Amen. And he submitted and he got it to me. And here comes again. Another man. Now, y'all know the Jamaican. We talk about our own Jamaican. We are the most beautiful, smart people. The women are beautiful. The men are strong. They are tenacious. They're assertive. And they can be tough. Now, this is a Jamaican man I'm talking to you. Uh, the first one was Jamaican. Now I'm getting into the nationality here. And this man was so humble. This man said, okay, I said, you got to do this over? Or I've got to do this. I'm going to have to cut it. But I need you to do X, Y, Z so we can get it together Amen. before the night is over. He said, okay. I'm going to make sure it's done, Chief. He got it done. There was no issue. He went back and he did exactly what I asked him to do, just like what Sarah asked Abraham to do. Abraham did exactly what his wife asked him to do, what Sarah asked him to do. These men did exactly what the chief apostle asked. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. What the chief asked him to do. I said to my son, I said, son, that's before we start our life. I said, son, I don't want to hear you say nothing familiar. I don't want to hear you start your prayer with no familiarity. Find a new king to pray. I do not believe 
in familiarity. I don't believe in poetic prayer. No, the chief don't. Now, I don't. I really do not. And I don't care. Prayer is prayer. Some people say, but you better know how to pray. You got Amen. to know how to pray. Just like you got to know how to write a composition in school. Just like you got to know yes. how to do a comprehension in school. You Amen. better know how to pray. Hallelujah. There is a way to pray. Yeah, a prayer is a prayer. We understand. That's what a lot of people say. We suffer from lack of knowledge. My son said, okay, mommy. He went up. He did exactly what I said. Exactly what I asked him to do. I don't want you to go up there. No, 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 no. No. And be just so monotonous. Find God in another way. Pray. Let, let the enemy be confused. Don't understand how you going to communicate. Find that you obey. Never have problem. And he did exactly. I said, you are not going to go up there and pray over five minutes. Amen. All right? He obeyed. He submitted. Now, these are all the men. All the men. There was one, there was two that never, was never able to be on they were rude. They were indecent. They were they were not presentable. They they lied, and that's understand. So now I have how many? Only two. Only two. One I could not use. I could not use one because I would be. They would look at me and say, "How could Chief put this out there?" Now you know, Chief. You they would blame the the, the person. They would blame me and say, Chief, how would you put the man of God out here like this? And you are someone who rebuke. You are someone who correct. You are someone who instruct. So I never say anything. Because I am like that. I stay silent. Later on, later on, it was said, oh, so you didn't like mine. Nothing more. Wow. You didn't like mine. Nothing more. I was able to reply. And I said, well, for one, you don't wear a clergy like that. Uh-uh. You're dealing, you're dealing with a woman of excellency. You don't put on a clergy like that and then have XYZ hanging out like that. I can't make you look bad. No, I love you enough to cover you. I love you enough to guard you, to hide your mess. Hallelujah. He said, and your prayer was not in duration of time. Your prayer was not fitting for what I request of you. So why do you have an attitude? You are not the only one I have corrected. So understand there are men with the spirit like Sarah. Come on, y'all better hear me. There are men out there with a the spirit of confusion. There are men out there with a the spirit of indignation. But I'm speaking to let y'all know that so they're women, but they're men who are humble. And in my conclusion with that matter, I believe the men are more humble. Because even when I spoke back to the man who messed up, he never answered me. Wow. Even when I let him know I closed the book on you, there's nothing more I can do to help you, he never answered. He is still humble. <laughs> Y'all better hear me. But if it was a woman, she probably would curse and carry on and carry on the worst way. Mothers are talking to you today. Women of God were mothers. Be still and shut your mouth and be patient. Don't try to help God and bring Abba in your house. Hallelujah. He Hallelujah. didn't answer me. The Lord said, the other one, you need to cut him loose. Block him. I blocked him and he called. I blocked him and he called. He called. The Lord said, you have to shut some of them out completely. You have prayed and asked me to expose every friend in me. I have been exposing and they're dropping every weekend. They're dropping either Thursday or Friday. I am going to cut them. I'm going to expose them even if they're in your own house. Now understand. Understand that the man I've come to find out that we build our house and we tear it down. Amen. A lot of times, we we mothers, we blame the men. Oh, yeah, they're bad out there. Oh, yeah, 
that ain't no good. We understand. Yeah, yeah, we understand. But we as mothers and we as women, we need to sit back and do a rain check. Amen. Mother State is coming and yes, we all we gonna do is loving mama. I come to just pick up some stuff today and I may not get another life. I come to let y'all know that some of you all need deliverance from the spirit of bipolar, need deliverance from Jezebel spirit, need deliverance from contemporary spirit, need deliverance. You Hallelujah. tell your sons, get the four letter house, telling you, get everything is a four letter, everything in the same mouth that bless, get a curse. Amen. Uh huh. We talk, and that happened, and all the men did good. And then it comes down to a few women. We have the women, yes, but they, the women still erred. All the women did not do exactly what was asked to do, yet they're still women of God. Amen. One didn't submit their picture. One, when they asked to, to redo it, well, my phone is not working. So let's do it another time, Chief Apostle, because my phone ain't working. Uh -huh. Did you, let, 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 me, let me help you. Why some of us cannot grow? Why some of us are stuck? And then I get more than, more than one video. I only need one. Because I'm dealing with a lot. I'm setting this, this thing up. It takes a lot of work, y'all. But these are still God's daughters. Amen. I know their heart. Amen. I know their heart. Hallelujah. So I charge it to their head. I was merciful like Christ is. You see, Jesus knew Peter. Peter had an intemperament. But Jesus knew who Peter was. Amen. And this, there was one that she never threw it over. She said, another time. And for, for no reason, it would get downloaded. For no reason, this video would not get downloaded. I said, Lord, what happened? The Lord said to me, you see, I'm not going to let you put this out because she didn't obey your order. So I would not let you put it out in the stream. Wow. After the stream was over, it's when that was downloaded. And I said, Lord, may I extend mercy? He said, yes, this is a revelation to you. The mercies of God were still extended even though she repaired and said, my phone is acting up and I can't do it and I can't this and I can't that. We women, we mothers, we are rebellious. We make issues in our lives. We bring confusion in our lives. We don't take instructions. We are very rebellious. As a result of that, our sons or husbands have caused many of their life, their life to be in, in, in torment because you are the first woman in your son's life. You are the first woman. You are the example. Merciful, even though I closed the book. Understand. Now we go to another, another woman who was asked to pray. Now, I didn't get everything done. Woman wasn't able to pray within the time slot. Let me tell you what I did. I was trained. I was trained by a proven leader. A proven leader, community leader, by the name of huh, Mike Clinton, a state representative of Clinton County. He always lands on me. I remember one day I was in the park, and they were having a private issue, and everybody, everybody 
was in the private just was on the stage and they were ready and somebody pointed me out and said, why don't we use, ain't that Pastor Arlene? She can pray. Hallelujah. If you, if you don't like my anointed, say, oh no, we, we don't want to use her. Boy. She, she's too powerful. Oh, no, 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 no. But he was determined to get me on the stage. And I said, huh? Oh, no, 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 I, I can't. He said, you better, you better pray. Amen. And be ready at all times. Hallelujah. I submit it. Hallelujah. I submit it. I obeyed it. Went on that stage and pray. Then God show up. Hallelujah. God show up in a yes. mighty way. Yes. And I did not pray over the time. No, I did not. I did exactly what he asked me to do. As a result of that, I have always been a prayer warrior. and a main prayer warrior on National Day of an highlighted one. Let me, let me help some of you mothers and some of you women of God or mothers that you will be able you will be able to listen to this word today and soar. And soar. My son, obey my command and live. My son, obey my laws and live. My son, obey my instructions and live. If we don't know how to obey instruction, if we don't know how to persevere, if we don't know how to understand as mothers, as women, can I tell you, you have shown a seed of confusion in your life, in your children's life, and in your second, third, fourth generation life. Oh, that's deep, Chief. Oh, yeah, speaking deep. Amen. I may not have a lot of likes today, but I will speak what the Lord had me to speak. So, then we, I end up having to go through, the Holy Spirit said, no, just click on one of the prayer. Whatever happened, let it happen. So I clicked on it and allowed that. And yes, the heart of this person is the most beautiful heart. But yet, Sarah, Sarah was beautiful. Sarah means princess. Sarah is a princess. A princess is lovely, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about some princesses here who have, who have some tendencies or some characteristics like Sarah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, listen. Because you tell them to do something and they do something else. Let God, let God have his way in your life, mothers. Let God fix it. Let God handle it because a big is better than sacrifice. We mothers of Zion, we think we're in all the time. We don't know how to be submissive. We like to help God and that ain't going to take us anywhere. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I got the prayer. Didn't have time to, to, to even send back and say do this over because I had, I'm, 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 I'm packed for the day. I'm packed. So the Lord should just put it up. If whatever happens, happens. Because what this is going to do, it's going to deliver my daughter. Hallelujah. My daughter will be able to see. To see for herself. Hallelujah. Her own error. Because she has a heart after me. Hallelujah. So let mercy be the portion. Amen. And so she was able to be aligned. I didn't have those problems with none of the men. So I come to the conclusion that men are more submissive than women. And if the men of God see that you are a genuine vessel, he's going to respect you. He's going to honor you. He's going to obey you. And if he's a man of understanding, he even though you wrong, he's going to be silent. He's going to give you what you want and let, a, let whatever situation happen, happen. That's what he's going to do because he's going to love you as Christ loved the church to deal with you with understanding and to honor you so his prayers can be answered and you is not submissive. My God, then he will do exactly what he will do for he is God by himself and he will allow, he will allow 
Yeah. We will allow it. And when you blame the righteous, the righteous will be still at peace. Nothing shall move the man of God. Nothing. We mothers, we need to take a red check on what we do, how we do, when we do, where we do, why we do what we do, and learn to take instructions so that our children, our sons especially, our sons can become great men of God, great husbands, Amen. not wayward, and doing crazy stuff. You have to sit back and begin to think, what caused my son to be what he is? Why are my sons the way they are? Mm -hmm. What happened? Mm -hmm. Why is my son so wayward? Mm -hmm. Why? You better question it. Why is my son like Agar? Why? Why? Why is my son? Why is my son a wanderer? Why is my son an Ishmael? Why? 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 Mm -hmm. Could it be because of you? Mm -hmm. Amen. Ponder that mother. I didn't come to preach no pretty message to you today. Why is my son sick? Are you sick? Are you rebellious? Are you a liar? Are you deceptive? Now, I'm going to go in my own house, Apostolic House of Miracles. I'm going to prove to you that women are not submissive like men are. <laughs> so I've been training my people to pray five minutes prayer. Five minutes. Not over five minutes. You better be on it. And I, since the pandemic, they have no clue that I have them in training. They have no clue what my plans were. They have no clue. So they pray and they send me what they pray. Oh, y'all got to do that over. No, it's too many. Oh, the prior's not. It's too much vain repetition in the prayer. Oh, no, 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 no. Your prayer, your thesis is confusing now. I don't understand the prayer. So you got to do it over. I'm, I'm texting them. Mm -mm. Not approved. Not approved. Not approved. Not approved. Not approved. Not approved. Even with my own son. He sent me a prayer that I did not approve. I said, uh oh, not approved, son. Mm -mm. He said, okay, mommy. I'm going to do it over. He do it over and send it back. I have folks who never do it over. The men did it over and sent it back, but the woman never did it. Mm. The men did their prayer over and sent it back the very day, the very hour, but the woman never did with no explanation. Y'all better hear me. I did my own study on this. And one of my sons, spiritual son, oh man, you got to do it over. I got to do it over. I'll do it over. Not approved. Not approved. And he never stopped until he got approved. Hallelujah. Within the same day, within the same time, he never stopped. Hallelujah. They never got frustrated. But the woman got very frustrated. Sarah got frustrated until her husband go into the maid. Mm. Huh? But none of the men in apostolic house of miracles got frustrated. They, they were determined. One cried. He cried and he said, I will not stop until I get it. And he prayed, said, I said, not approved. He prayed, said, not approved. He prayed, said, not approved. He prayed, said, he prayed, said it not approved, but finally he got approved. And he got excited. He said to one of his spiritual sisters, I was not going to stop until I get approved. My God, my God. This man humbled himself. I prayed and prayed and prayed. And with the woman, I had to vouch. I had to vouch and, and, and beseech and, and wept and cry and wept and wept and said you can't give up I had to weep and beseech them and beseech you can't quit some didn't even reply to my messages don't you hear me my God then I did an open week and I said well you all are going to give a word of encouragement read the scripture or pray listen they were giving everybody was giving a word of encouragement 
Everybody wanted to chat, 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 chat. Everybody. And it was just a few who were praying and doing the word. Don't you hear me? Hello, somebody. Understand? I test my very house. Hallelujah. For a wise mother test her own children. Amen. A wise leader test their house and know their sheep. We come back and we say, okay, I need y'all to pray again. Don't go over X minutes. They go over, correct. The men take the correction. The women, no. They take it, but they have no other prayer. Nothing was sent. Understand. This is how I came about that. I found out that men are way more humble than we women. We mothers. And that is why our house is messed up. That is why there's so much confusion in the house. That's why our sons are wild and wretched. That's why they're wayward. When they get in trouble, we begin to cry. It cuts everybody out. But I come to bring correction to your house. I come to tell you, mother, get it together. Humble yourself. Take instructions. Be submissive to God. Be submissive and pray. Huh? It's not that bad with the men. No. Yeah, we understand they're crooks and they do. Yeah, we understand. Why are they crooks? What make the crooks? Who make the crooks? In this, in this, in this scripture, if Abraham wasn't a man of God, Sarah could make him become a devil. His own wife could make him become a devil. Yeah, I understand that we have some we have some men who are sold by the devil. They're they're the devil's agent. They seek to destroy, we understand. They seek to destroy. Yeah, yeah. But if I may just digress a little bit and go right into Jezebel and Ahab. Who started it? Ahab went on from him. But it took Jezebel to make the command. It took Jezebel to bring in the dead. It took Jezebel to pray the witchcraft prayer. It took Jezebel to send a letter. It took Jezebel. Speaking right, Chief. Uh-huh. I know I'm speaking right, and I may not get another likes, but I want to speak to you women, mothers. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. You mothers. You mothers. You like to go out there and do things. And listen, listen. Stop bringing women in your house. If your daughters are grown, they ain't supposed to live in your house with your husband. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, no, I've been there. Uh-uh, even when they agree. Get them out of your house. Mm-hmm. Unless he's going to go into your daughter or he's going to get against your daughter. You cannot be a married woman. No, 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 no. It don't work. Even when they say, yes, I've been there and I suffered. Amen. Mm -hmm. Understand. Uh-uh. He's going to either want to go in or if you are one of the artists who like to do all sorts of perverted stuff, that's what you're going to do to bring your daughter into all the trip. No, you're grown, you got to be living on your own. That's it. All right. I found out that men are way more humble. I want to I wanna bring a testimony to you. And this is a testimony. Years ago, I went to prayer breakfast. I was late. I was late. My table was not set. Tickets were paid for. Everything was paid for. So we were a little late. When we got there, there was no table. There was no table for us. So, Pastor Mike says to me, Mike Glanton says to me, we're going to have to scatter your people all over the room and put y'all in different seats. I look at him and my eyes buck. I said, oh, no, 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 no. Um, I, I can leave. I, we don't have to stay. He humbled himself immediately. He said, it's okay. It's okay, Chief. We're, we're going to make it happen for you. We're going to. I'd rather to have left because my sheets were not going to be all over the room knowing that I paid for a table. Amen. And we are not one hour late. We weren't 20 minutes late either. So he was humble. He humbled himself quickly 
And he said, we're going to make it happen. If it was a woman, she would say, well, we could leave. We don't care. We don't need you. Because the woman would say, well, you're already paid. We don't need you anymore. But the man of God, the proven leader, my Clinton, a man who trained me, who said, be ready at all times, he humbled himself to me. To me. And I humbled myself to him. It's okay. But I preferred to have left with all my sheep together because we came as a flock together. Amen. I was not going to allow that. That's what you call a true mother. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what you call a true mother. Hallelujah. Die for the children. Stand up Hallelujah. for the honor of the children. Stand up and fight for your children. Stand up for justice. Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for what is right. And the man of God understood and submitted. Hallelujah. I want to share with you another testimony. Testing my people fruits was good. In a pandemic, it's good to test the fruits of yes. who you're leading. Amen. And having them to pray, having the children to pray, have allowed me to test the fruits of all my sheep and know them even better. You see, God allowed this pandemic for the body of Christ to do an examination, for the mothers to do an examination, for the homes to do an examination, for the church to do an examination. We are in quarantine so we can check ourselves. Yes, Lord. And not be anxious to get out there. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? We're in quarantine so we can go in quarantine. If you've never been in fasting, now it's time for you to fast. If you've never been in a sabbatical, you are now in a sabbatical to get into a sabbatical. Y'all better hear me. Quarantine pandemic has brought us, has brought me even closer to God. More fasting. I was at 2 a.m. this morning. Why not sleep? I am talking to God on your behalf. I'm covering you all. That's what we do. Thank you, Jesus. So Hallelujah. I'm, yeah. I'm understanding better. Hallelujah. The people I'm leading, and because I'm so in the presence of God, I'm even seeing, seeing some things about them. Yes. Lord. Oh yeah. Yes. I'm seeing. I'm hearing and seeing and knowing them better. And when this is over, it will be a new order in the body of Christ. Overall, the real pastors are going to have to come up with some new order. New order in the world. New order in the church. Hallelujah. New order in the homes. New order with the mothers. Hallelujah. We're birthers. We're responsible. We're builders. We make laws. Come on, y'all better hear me today. Hallelujah. There ain't this come up here to get you no flowers. I come to help you to set your house in order. I come yes. to help you as mothers. Listen, our children are a language that we send out. What are your sons like? Mm. What are your daughters like? Oh, what? What are you doing? Yesterday, I decided, said, Lord, I need you to reveal to me who do I need to do something for? And this lady been on my heart a lot. This friend that I haven't, I haven't seen in years and just seen since my dad passed. The Lord showed me her. The Lord had me heard her heart. She's been very supportive. Not very often, but when she supports, she's heartfelt. Amen. And I said, Lord, I want to bless somebody that you approve. Hallelujah. And I did. I he approved that I bless this person. And he said, I'm going to prove to you. I'm going to prove to you that what I told you is so. Hallelujah. I did so last night. And this morning, it came back to me plus plus. Hallelujah. Y'all better hear me. Y'all better hear me. Immediately after National Day of Prayer, final prayer order, 9 p.m. watch. A lady that I helped a couple years ago, a 
prophesied to her. Let her know your mom have you in court. Your mother is a Jezebel. She ain't right, but I let you know when you go to court with your own blood mother, you are going to win this case. Hallelujah. It shall be. I have been the messenger right after life. I said, who is this? There's no picture. I don't answer people who don't have picture. The Holy Spirit said, look and answer. It was a woman trying to find me to bless me financially. Hallelujah. I said what you said years ago. I have won the case with my mother. The mother was a Jezebel. She was an eater. She was wicked to her own daughter. Want to take from her daughter. Want to use her daughter. Abuse her daughter. Don't you hear me? Want to use her, take her money and make her daughter go crazy. What kind of a mother are you? Are you a mother of example? Are you a harlot? Are you a liar? Are you a trickster? Who are you? Are you like the mother of Esau and Jacob? Are you a Sarah? Who are you? I'm asking some questions today. Are you the one sending your husband in a wall? Are you the one like a harlot? Don't know what kind of man you got. Just get up and get in, get out. Who are you? Are you causing your children to have the spirit of Ishmael to be wild? Are you causing them to have the spirit of Agar? Flying, running up and down everywhere. Run back to you, run from you. Run back to you, run from you. Who are you? What kind of a mama? Are you? I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help the mamas, the women. And we learn to take instructions. Yes. Now I'm going to tell you, when a woman is truly, truly wrapped up, tangled up with Jesus, she is humble, she's submissive, she follows instructions, and she's a builder of her house. She's a proper 31 woman. She has it together. She takes instructions. She has understanding. Wisdom had built her house. She has wound out her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has prepared new wine. She has spread her table. And you can read Proverbs 9 for the rest of it. This was none other but the apostle of Tanya Johnson. She took the instructions. She did exactly what was asked of her. She made sure she when she revised it, she repeated, revised it, and said, let me know if what I have repeated to you, if that is what exactly you're asking me to do. She was on point. Don't you hear me? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God and my people, my prayer warriors, my people that I laid it on. They came out strong and mighty. They came out well trained. They came out powerful. Estate, 
She was my pocketbook. She was in the office. She know real estate, but never been to real estate school. When I was a cosmetologist doing hairstyle, a stylist in New York, she was right there with me. She, that's why she don't pay money for her daughter here to be done. She's a stylist by watching her mama. She's a makeup artist by watching her mama. Don't you hear me? She's a woman of faith by seeing her mother pray and believe that she ain't saved, but she know about God. She understand what prayer is. She said to me this morning, mama, my baby, my, my your granddaughter, you gotta continue teaching her to pray. Don't you hear me? She will be with you this summer, and I want you to finish on the job by teaching her to pray. Y'all better hear me. My, my babies, my children never left me. When I leave them, I make sure they were with the right people. I had twin girls that used to babysit my daughter. All they do is go to church. When I was busy doing my thing, my girl, my daughter was in church with a twin girl. And the mama, don't you hear me? A godly family. Y'all better hear me. What kind of a mother are you? Where do you leave your kids? When do you send them out? Now you're in quarantine. Glory be to God. They won't be molested. They won't be raped. They won't be kidnapped. God is giving you a time to set your house in order. Mother can call it on you. Stop and do it right. Don't be nagging. Don't be disturbing. Be a praying woman. Be a praying wife. Be a praying mother. Prayer works. The power of a prayer. Mother, Hallelujah. pray, woman, it works. Y'all may not like me today, but y'all gonna love me tomorrow. What you say, talk to me. You're gonna love me tomorrow because right now you get cut, cut. Yeah, get a little cutting, but the cutting is taking out some sin, it's taking out some flesh, it's taking out the spirit of rebellion that is in you. Yet you have a title, yet you're a mother. All I'm about shit, and then you shot. I come to tell the truth, I come to rebuke, I come to correct, I come to instruct. Hallelujah! That's what I come to do. Yeah, I'm come to patch it today. What kind of a mother are you? Are you obedient to leadership? Are you hypocritical and deceptive? Are you a liar? What are you? What are you? Are you a troublemaker? Huh? Answer. What are you? <laughs> huh? When you get instructions from your leader, how do you follow it? Huh? Do you take it for granted? Not knowing you're on a test? <laughs> Then you wonder why you're stuck. Then you wonder why your son is the way he is. Then you wonder why your daughter is the way she is. It's because of who you are. Yeah. Amen. Can I just tell you plain? It's because of who you are. They watch you. They watch you. They talk about pastor kids are always the worst kids. Well, I have been a pastor without a daddy, a real daddy, with a testing giant of every kind of unclean spirit. I stood my ground and stood in my integrity and said, God, I know your work, don't lie. I'm going to submit, I'm going to pray because yeah. God, I asked you for a son. I promise you to give me a son. I'll give him back to you. I did exactly what I promised God. He gave me exactly what I asked him for. But look at us today. So don't come to me with no story. No, 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 don't. I want to hear your story. Get it right. In conclusion, we close this up for you. Then Sarah said to Abram, my wrong. Sure. You see, she was able to see herself. Mm -hmm. Be upon you. Mm -hmm. she, she caused it. She caused the havoc and the chaos. Yeah, she do. You have, you have mothers who are sisters to you who cause havoc in the family. Uh-huh. They live with indignated spirit, jealous and competing. You have sisters and sisters and mothers. They are competing. They are jealous because from way back as childhood, something happened. Generational curse of wickedness crept in. Mama, start to gossip against the daughter with the daughter. That is wrong. You don't gossip against your child with another child. That's not motherly. That's not the mother of God. No, no, no. The child come to you with a complaint about the sister or the brother. You shut that child up and speak positively and say, well, maybe so and so. 
uh, maybe so and so, and maybe so and so. Do not sit down and gossip against your children with your children. Hallelujah. Because what that does is create a cancer. A cancer to destroy and bring chaos and hatred and war and debt in the family lineage. Are you that mother who sit and gossip against your child, against your daughter with another daughter? Or you, if you're doing it, the Lord said to tell you, stop, stop, lest you shall perish. Yes, you will perish. Stop, stop. Where there's malice, strife, bitterness, eight, all of the works of the flesh is all unclean spirit. It is an unclean spirit that operates when a mother sit and gossip against her child with her child. You cannot do it. It is not of God. It must stop. Mothers, don't allow it. Amen. It brings destruction in the family. Amen. It brings destruction and the mother will steal. We'll call you to be a thief. We'll call you to take birth right away. We'll call you to do wrong things. As a result, it will tear and tear and tear and tear. And you, the mother, will pay for all of that. And you leave a legacy of curses to all your generation. Closing. Then the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water after all the havoc. Now she ran away. But God intervened. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord intervened. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. The angel, now this, this cantankerous Sarah the princess, bipolar Sarah the princess, in my own observation, don't quote me correct, but that's my observation. Evidently, she was bipolar because you tell your husband to do something. When he do it, then you have a problem. And then you start to blame him. And now ah, there's confusion, confusion. He's submissive and humble. He kicked back and said, okay, I'll leave her to you. Do what you want to do. And now she ran away. But well, what's God in this? Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way of shore. Mm -hmm. God is awesome. And he said, Agar, Sarah's maid, he knew who she was. Uh-huh. Where have you come from? And where are you going? Amen. She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarah. And you know, Agar means flight. So she took her flight because now Sarah created the havoc in the house, but God intervened. God intervened. God intervened. He intervened because he see exactly what Sarah has done, the wickedness that Sarah has done. So God said, ah, uh -huh, no, no, no. It ain't going to work. It's not going to work. He says, the angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress. And submit yourself under her hand. Uh huh. Don't run. Submit. Submit. Don't run. We we need to have a summoning spirit when havoc is taking place. We as mothers, we need to sit back and say, "Wait a minute. Hmm, wait a minute. I can't chase up my daughter. No. And if I may, I'm going to say this." I know I'm a little lengthy, but you gotta hear this. Before I got married, before my divorce, when I was, before I got married, this last marriage, I said to the man, I have a spiritual daughter who stays with me, my son who's still in school. Do you want this? He said, sure. I said, she's not my biological daughter. She's my spiritual daughter who stays here with me and who assists me in ministry. Do you want this? Would you like this? I have to disclose you these things. He said, oh, sure. That's not a problem. I said, understand. She's grown, but she's like a young lady of 15 years old. Can you handle this? He said, sure. Hmm. Watch this now. So I'm going to read this now. And he said, Agar, Sarah made, 
Where are you? Let me go down to verse 9. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. And the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply. So go back to verse 9. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Now he wanted me to become like Sarah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I reminded him he tortured me every time. Oh, no, no, no. And he would, he would, he would torture and torture and argue. And I had to get up one night and sit up in the bed and slap that bed with authority and said, if you ever dare come to me again about God's daughter, is either you go and she stay. Don't you ever, you agree upon this matter. Don't you ever come back to me about my daughter. Amen. Shut it down with authority. Never said another word. Until a couple of weeks later, he tried again. I said, all right, I'm going to submit to him. I spoke to my daughter. I said, we're going to make a movie. Because there's a demon in this. But I submit to him. I said, okay, I'm going to. And he would complain that she did this, and she did this, and she did this. Now, Mark, you, that's a lie. All of this lie. But I submitted. Okay. Okay, baby. I got it. I'm going to take care of it. Okay. So we, 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 my daughter and myself do a movie now. We're going to do a movie now. So I'm like, okay, this, this is what we're going to do. And I did a movie and, and acted like a movie star. And acted like, oh, well, you, you better, you better so and so and get, get, get like I'm really mad at my daughter in front of him. You know what he did? He went, when, when, when he saw, it looked like it was a heat. He turned around and said, where you going? I said, come here, you, you need to confront this. I'm not, I'm not going to get involved. Okay. He didn't know it was a movie. He didn't know it was an act to show him, hey, hey, we know, we, we both know what you're trying to do. And after that, God will take him down. God took him down. God brought him straight down. I submitted and began. I said, I'm going to do this, daughter. This is what's going on. And just work with your mom. Sarah to Agar, he said, Agar, Sarah's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I'm fleeing from the presence of my mistress. I didn't flee. I tried to, but I couldn't. I had to summon. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress, submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted. So they shall not be counted for a multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael. Watch what happened in the end. Because the Lord has heard your affliction. The Lord heard my affliction. He saw what I was in, but I summoned it. Hallelujah. I summoned it and prayed and said, okay, God, I put myself in this. I didn't obey you, so let your perfect love in me. Let it, God, let it work. Hallelujah. And at the end of the day, because the Lord has heard my affliction, he shall be a white man. He, he is hand shall be against every man and every man hand against him and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren then she called the name of the lord who spoke to her you are the god who sees for she said i i also here see him who sees me therefore the well was called so it got it, in other words she was able to prove who god is she was able to prove in the midst of her affliction, in the midst of my affliction, in the midst of my disobedience, in the midst of me doing what I wanted to do. God still extended his mercy. Yes, I have a red tape on me. Yes, I have a divorce. Yes, I had a bad marriage. Yes, it was hard. But God still established me. God heard and answered prayer. In the midst of the mess, he still 
when we can submit, admit, submit, and admit our faults, even when hearts are against you. Remember, all the odds came against the Ishmael. Remember, God said, all oh, this is going to happen. And if you read the story further down, you will see that he was still blessed because he came from a blessed man. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. I bless you today. I trust that after this day, we women, we mothers will pay attention Hallelujah. and know what we need to be, how we need to be, why we need to be, yes. what we need to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for this word today. Take heed, women of God. Take heed, apostles. Take heed, evangelists. Take heed, prophetesses. Take heed. Take heed, teachers. Take heed, doctors. 